But there's a member of the Outsiders that you didn't mention, a, a little known MC by the name of Eminem. Ah! <laughs> well, see, Eminem, yeah, true. Eminem is, I guess, considered, you know, a later generation outsider. He was there. He was there initially, but I always looked at him as a distant cousin because he wasn't, you know. In Jersey. He wasn't in Jersey with us, but he definitely, you know, he definitely was there and, and, and present. How could I forget Eminem? <laughs> Well, how did he get into that mix? Because here's this Detroit kid, this Detroit white kid at that. Right. Back, you know, when hip hop wasn't, didn't really have a lot of white kids, period. Right. And now he's part of this Jersey crew called the Outsiders. Right. Uh, how did that come together? Well, I, I was, see, okay, so picture this house with a bunch of rappers in it. This is called the Outhouse. So I guess when Eminem would come to New York, because every you know everybody had to like break ground in New York if you were going to be anything in rap. So I guess when he came to the East Coast, he would come stay at the Outhouse. Now, to my understanding, Pace and Bazaar from D12 were friends first, mm. and they ended up doing some music together. And I think through that relation, Pace ended up meeting Eminem, and then Eminem, I guess when Bizarre came to Jersey, he bought Eminem with him. Um, because I, I was, you know, I was like baby mama at this time, so I, I wasn't privy to all of the guy stuff that was going on, but I believe that's how Eminem initially uh, came to us in Jersey. Now, I do have a very vivid memories of us doing a lot of like the beat the street together. Like for instance, uh, we did uh, the Wu-Tang Park Hill day event. And um, and then there were blaze battles happening, like all of that stuff that was going on. Yes, Eminem was very present. Um, I wasn't really like running with the outs with Eminem simultaneously. I mean, I was there, but remind, mind you, you know, I just had my daughter when I got my deal. So I was mostly at home uh, with my baby, unless there were like some, some key rap events to do. And then that's when I would come out and I'd see Eminem. But for the most part, the day to day, I didn't really interact with Eminem like that. I was like a lot of those Demos that they did in the house together. I'm I'm not really on those joints. Oh, right, because I remember when I bought the Slim Shady EP, mm -hmm. which was before his album on Aftermath. Mm -hmm. He shouted out Outsiders. Oh yeah, no, he was definitely no, he was definitely there. Yeah, he was definitely there. Um, it was tough, you know, being a white boy trying to go into these New York scenes and rhyme and the outsiders was, was you know were there holding them down like I know a few occasions where you know folks had to jump in fights and and you know on on his behalf oh so he was getting into fights with people and well what M would do is like you know he'd stage dive he would just do things and you know quirky white boy stuff and you know sometimes it went over well sometimes it didn't and you know, he had the outsiders there to, to, to back him up. When you first started hearing Eminem, you know, live and on record, did you have any idea what the future was going to hold? Did you, did you see, did you say, okay, this is a really exceptional rapper? I was like, okay, just another rapper in our crew and, you know, maybe he'll make it, maybe he won't. I always, I always thought he was dope. Um... I didn't, like, he was, for me, I thought, you know, I thought he was dope for a white guy, but it wasn't, it wasn't my first time hearing a, a dope white rapper before, like, you know, I was a fan of MC Search, I was, you know, mm -hmm. there were... Beastie other, Boys? Right, you know, there were, there were white rappers that I was uh, fans of, so did I think he would be, you know, the Eminem that he is today? No. Um... I thought we were all, you know, on the same path. Like, <laughs> he got his deal with Aftermath at the same time I got my deal with, 
with a Q-tip and, and ultimately flip mode. So um, the Outsiders had a crew deal. D12 had a crew deal. Everybody had solo deals. Like there were just deals on top of deals. Like we were just milking each other's labels. So I thought we were, you know, pretty much all off to the races. Um, I didn't like the, the, the crazy rapping that he did, you know, start talking about his mom and like the trailer park stuff. Like he wasn't really doing that. Uh, mm. He wasn't, uh, we didn't get that. Like he was. Well, I mean, on the Slim Shady EP, he was doing that. No, 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 he yeah. was. But I mean, like when he was doing demos in the crib with Got the it. outsiders. It was he more traditional. Right. Yeah, no, because I, I remember before the, the Slim Shady EP, I, I forgot what the what the name of his first project was, but he right. kind of sounded like AZ back then. Right. You know, I mean, the 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 killing his baby mother and all that, that kind of came with the Slim Shady right. that, persona that, later that, on. That came, yeah, once he became signed and I guess. Well, no, no, the, the EP was before he got signed. The, the, you're saying the, the, that, the Slim Shady EP he mm -hmm. put out independently, mm -hmm. and then he got signed off of that, and it became the Slim Shady LP, which right. some of the songs and oh, okay, I'm I'm confusing yeah. the EP with the LP. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, like, I didn't hear like the you know like the crazy white boy stuff. Like, I didn't really get that until like once he was you know off to the races. I I think he was more like you know just spitting. When 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 you know mm -hmm. when he was in our circumference, 